Just when you thought you'd never hear more than talk coming out of Washington about border security, like, oh, I don't know, a bill that would actually fund it, meet President Bush's Merida Initiative. It's quietly been in the works for almost a year and calls for $1.4 billion for equipment and training. But before you get too excited and start taking back any of that smack talk you've been dishing out to Washington, you should know that the southern border our president wants over a billion of our tax dollars to secure isn't ours. It's Mexico's. According to the State Department website, the purpose is to combat the threats of drug trafficking, transnational crime, and terrorism in the Western Hemisphere. Isn't it a shame that we have no experience, no history to look back on to figure out if this might actually be a positive and effective use of taxpayer money? No history, unless, of course, you've ever heard of Los Zetas. They're an extremely violent Mexican gang that works with what's known as the Gulf Cartel to use whatever means necessary to continue their drug trade into the United States. The irony is, the gang is led by deserters of an elite Mexican army troop that was specifically trained to take out the Gulf Cartel. Any idea who trained them? We did. Back in the 90s, with American taxpayer dollars, right here on American soil at Fort Benning, Georgia's School of the Americas. President A. Bush wants to spend our hard-earned money securing Mexico's southern border, even as he condescendingly dismisses American citizens as vigilantes for pointing out that he refuses to secure ours. We here at Blogs for Borders have a few questions for our president. We'd like to know, Mr. President, if you're so proud of this initiative, why have you been negotiating it in secret? We'd like to know, Mr. President, why securing Mexico's border is far more important to you than securing ours. And we'd like to know, Mr. President, exactly who you think you're supposed to be serving here. Because it clearly isn't the American people. And we think the American people just might have something to say about that. The victim. A five-year-old Indiana girl, the accused, Jose Luis Oviedo, 30, an illegal alien from Mexico, the charge, four counts of felony child molesting, the story. The five-year-old victim, whose mother was dating Oviedo, has described touching and sexual activity to police investigators. Authorities were initially contacted after the girl's grandmother discovered lesions on her body. Hospital tests revealed that the five-year-old has herpes. And according to a witness, so does Oviedo. So what else do we know about this scumbag? A local news photographer knocked on the door of the house where police were waiting for him, and the man who answered said he'd gone to Mexico. The victim's mother says that he gave her a fake name, and police suspect he's using another one now. He's been arrested 14 times in the past 10 years. Convictions include domestic battery and battery in the late 90s, and multiple DUI convictions since then. Two cases of domestic battery against him were dismissed in 2007. Of course, if our government had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, Oviedo wouldn't have been here to commit a string of crimes on American soil. If our government had been doing its job at any point in the last 10 years, he wouldn't have been here to repeatedly molest a five-year-old girl. So you can thank our government for the rape of an innocent child who will now have to live with a sexually transmitted disease for the rest of her life. And that makes this crime what? 100% preventable. The victims. Robert Danielson, 45, and Yasser Uzun, 52. The accused, Adalberto Montalongo Garcia, an illegal alien. The charges, two counts of second degree assault. The story, a fight broke out on February 6th at a Dayton, Oregon bar. Two men were stabbed and rushed to the hospital via ambulance to undergo surgery. Bartender April Neal describes trying to break up the fight and getting between Garcia and the victims. She also tried to block Garcia from leaving but he managed to get away. Deputies later took Garcia into custody at his residence. Garcia has 25, count him, 25 prior arrests under his belt, including seven for assault. 
His convictions include second-degree assault in 1982 and again in 1994. Also in 1994, a charge of attempted murder was dismissed. Of course, if our government had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, this dirtbag wouldn't have been here to commit assault after assault after assault on American soil, including the violent assaults of Robert Danielson and Yasser Uzun, making this crime what? 100% preventable. Janet Murgia recently unveiled the National Council of La Raza's brand new campaign of propaganda. So what exactly is the stated purpose of WeCanStopTheHate.org? According to the website, they're here to take the hate out of the immigration debate. If you page through the website, you'll find headings like myths versus facts and code words of hate. It all sounds very informative, unless you actually read it in which case you'll find a lot of claims without foundation and or taken out of context, and rhetoric that is carefully crafted to mislead the unknowledgeable and impressionable, and provide affirmation for those who are already true believers. Take the repeated assertion of groups or individuals having connections with white supremacist or other hate groups, for example. You would think that La Raza had stolen a page from the Southern Poverty Law Center's playbook. Wait. They didn't steal a page. They just used the SPLC as their source. This is the same SPLC that I contacted myself about an article in which they persistently refer to the well-documented connections between the Minuteman organization and white supremacist hate groups. The proof they sent me was links to other articles they'd written making the same claims and with the same lack of backup. I hate to break the news to both the SPLC and La Raza but the fact that you've made the same claim before doesn't qualify as evidence. And how is La Raza going about stopping the alleged hate? Murguia announced plans to meet with television executives to pressure them to censor anything La Raza claims is hate speech. Much like their purposefully dishonest cries of racist against those who want the flood of illegal immigration into this country halted, they'll scream hate speech until they're blue in the face. Because, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. Forget about the SPLC. How ironic is it that the leader of La Raza is taking a page from the playbook of Joseph Goebbels, Germany's Minister of Propaganda under Adolf Hitler. into this week's episode of the Blogs for Borders video blog burst. Our mission here at Blogs for Borders is to bring you the latest news the news ignores about the illegal immigration crisis our nation currently faces. If you like what we do, if you think it's the right thing to do and a tasty way to do it, there are a couple of ways you can help defray the cost of producing this show every week. First, you want to go to our website at freedomfolks.com. If you're going to shop at Amazon, go via the Amazon button on our sidebar and we'll get a commission for any purchases you make. Or you can click on the Support Blogs for Borders PayPal button, also at freedomfolks.com, to send us a donation that's earmarked for the show. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. And let's not forget those other things you're supposed to do. Until next week, be vigilant, be vocal, and be unrelenting. We've got a country to save.